you short a global stock portfolio or global Can't short. index. So I try to explain the shorting. Stocks will go down whether we have an inflationary outcome is, is the gold bugs predict or a deflationary as I predict more like the 30s. Either way, stocks will go down. Stocks don't like any crisis, any downturn in the economy. They don't like high inflation. They hate deflation. So the, the best place to make money in a downturn, it's just more risky than holding a 30 year treasury bond to me for everyday people would be to simply be short stocks. See, it fe it Unleveraged, feels, just short. It, Betting all, on stocks all, going down. You can, let me, exp to the listeners, let me tell you how shorting, how dangerous shorting is. Bitcoin went up 5 million X. A lot of people shorted it. They all lost everything because your downside is infinite. So if you had bought Bitcoin at a dollar and sold it at 50,000, you made 50,000 bucks. But if you had shorted Bitcoin at 50,000, it wrote it down to a dollar, which it never went to, you'd only have made. Richard, that's crazy. Just stop that logic. That means if you <laughs> held it forever. I'm not saying hold any of this forever. I wouldn't even hold it a couple months if something doesn't but changes in the wrong you're, way. You're looking you at are a short for a period of time. Stocks have gone up so much. The more any asset goes up, the less it can go up just because it's bigger. Anything bigger grows slower than in the early stages. So, so that the parabolas sort of, oh disprove that. If you go to zero, that would take forever in stocks today, yeah, and I wouldn't be in stocks. The longest I'd be short might be a year or two. I, I'm saying that if you look at the price chart, the history of all shorts is that they lose all of their money in almost every price chart because they print the money for free. As long as these price charts we're looking at are denominated in dollars, and they're printing the dollars for free. So Even what if do you, he, okay, you, you give me, Richard, sure. your recommendation. Let's say I'm right, we're gonna have some sort of big downturn. Yes. Just that one assumption, it could yep. be inflation. What is the one thing you would buy, have people buy to make money in a downturn? Stable coins. You buy stable coins. So right now, so well, yeah, because they're tied to the dollar, but so, so you've got- mean? You hate the dollar. Yeah, but they oh, have. Richard, what are you talking about here? You hate the dollar. You don't want anything in dollars or paying in dollar. Yes, but it has advantages that the dollar doesn't have. So when you take a dollar to your bank account, you have uh, probably some taxable income problems, don't you there? Yeah. So, you know, depending on what jurisdiction you live in, it could be the case that if you sold an asset for dollars, maybe you live in a jurisdiction where that's not a taxable event. And then maybe. You can just stick that in decentralized finance, which is currently paying, depending on what you're trading, 40% APR because people are borrowing it for leverage to get long. So in, in DeFi and Ethereum, you can take a stable coin and lend it out with just smart contract risk, no other counterparty risk. There's no AML, no KYC, no sign up risk, no global overlord that can be like, that's not your money. We're taking your money. None of that bullshit. That's all solved. So you just do have smart contract risk. You got to make sure you got to hope the code works right. And you can get in between six and 40% per year sitting on your fucking cash with, depending on where you live, maybe no taxes. How, sitting how in long cash. have stable coins been around? Four years, maybe. They actually trade Were more they volume than Bitcoin when, does. When Bitcoin crashed in 2018? Mm, yeah. Yeah, they were there. How did my first test, and because you could be right about this one sounds more reasonable to me, yeah. how did they do in that crash? Did they did did great, hold their value go up or go down? They're basically always about a dollar. They usually hold their pegs very well. Okay, so so that's a mm -hmm. way of preserve, not growing your money. You're not going to make money on that. Well, you're, I mean, look, six to 40% a year is good APR. dollar is going to preserve your money, which which I'll give you is at least a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Now, the reason so I that, tell you. That makes sense, but but yeah. you're not going to make, how are you going to make money? For well, you make six to 40% per year APR just for, mm -hmm. for, because what happens is you're putting your stable coins into the lending platform. And then okay. people are borrowing those to sell them for crypto, to get long crypto. And then they get wrecked and liquidated and then they have to give them back and then you get your coins back with interest and so traders traders being ruined is what allows people that lend out stable coins to be profitable so you know if, if you tried to lend out bitcoin or ethereum you get no interest you get 0.15 percent yeah. instead of six percent because you know it's harder to get a hold of these stable coins and right now more people want to get long because it's a parabola and people love to buy tops they absolutely love it they, they hate buying bottoms they love buying tops so I, my, if, if you believe that the markets are going to crash, I think getting into stable coins like DAI, which has no counterparty risk, 
just smart contract risk, or uh, USDC, which does have counterparty risk. They can seize your coins when they want, but you know they've only done it once or twice upon you know the government commanding them to for some legal thing. Um, and they've got more trading volume than the do- than Bitcoin has. Tether does more trading volume a day than Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. That's how popular they are. So stable coins are actually the most popular cryptocurrencies, even though they're real quickly, not you real. Say, okay, so you get interest because that's that's like a bond, only sounds better. How much interest yeah. you say you can make on that? Depending stable? on the platform that you're in, I mean, right now you're averaging about seven percent everywhere. So if you have USDC or Dai and you put it in DeFi right now, you're getting seven percent per year. And you can withdraw instantly. It's not locked. So you can you can make 6% APR today and pull it out tomorrow. Now, the fees are very that, high. That sounds attractive to me. Yep. Let's say this downturn lasts. The typical crash I'm talking about is two to three years. Mm-hmm. Over two to three years, seven and seven count, you could make 20, 30% interest and have something that's not going to fluctuate in value. And then you like can buy the bottom. Stocks. Yeah, and then you can buy the bottom. So, so, my, yeah. my, so my belief is that statistically the likelihood that you called the top top is very low compared to all the things that looked like yeah. tops that, the that, false that peaks. is very unlikely to call a top right exactly <laughs> give you that <laughs> and those and those people that get it wrong if they open any kind of short they are fucking annihilated so being in cash well, well, not, you're not, not going to get annihilated no no they hey richard you got to back up these people are shorting jesse livermore or whoever traders on leverage i'm talking if somebody's going to be short this time they are unleveraged short in a broad index not yeah not but you're still you still lose it all for two x's you lose all your money in a two x you're wiped out yeah I'm not but, but even about. without leverage with no leverage if the market two no x's you lose all your money if you have zero percent no leverage, no you will yes, not you unless you stay in for 90 percent, then you'll lose 90 percent of your money and anybody right. who stayed in over three years when it goes against you would be an idiot but but look we just did when you look at these dips if you shorted the 20 percent dump in equities you're now missing a third of your money with no leverage. If you just shorted with no leverage, the bottom of the 20% dump we had, we went up, what, fucking 30, 40% from the dump? So you're missing 30, 40 percent of your money and then you're just where we are now? Like it's, shorting is a terrible way to try and make money. Get flat with no risk because it's very impossible to get the top top. Okay, just this get is, flat I agree and then buy the bottom, that. buy the bottom. I don't recommend shorting to most people. Yeah. Stocks are even more volatile in downtime. Aggressive people, I do, if you know what you're doing. But um, if the reason, that's why I like a 30-year treasury bond, you're getting some interest, not 7%. You're getting a little over two, but you're this is locked it in for 30 years, and that's where the leverage is if things go down. So now, so when you want to get out of, when you want to get out of your seven percent reliably mm-hmm. with yep. no little or no downside. Yep. That's as good or better. I would agree with you. That's as good or better because even that 30 year treasury bond, if, if rates um, keep going against you, then you're going to lose some money too. Yeah. And so, I, so I if, just, if, I think they can, can keep lock printing. In your value and make 7% no. a year, I think that is an excellent. I just don't know that because I'm not an expert in your area. It's really easy. If you can do that. That's an excellent strategy. I, mean, I, I could show you how to do it in 10 minutes. It's very easy. You go sign up on an exchange like Bitstamp, Coinbase, Kraken. You buy yourself some USDC and you, you, you can put it on a whole bunch of different platforms that can walk you through it. It's very easy. And yeah. then when the bottom, when you think the bottom is hit, you can get long if you want, or you can just buy back the spot. And look, Bitcoin's well, well, up. I tell you, I, I hate to say it. I mean, <clears throat> one of the best things in the next boom, just like the Internet stocks, are after they got annihilated. In 2000, 2002, they were the best investment buying Amazon. Yep. Yeah, would, would have been like the one hindsight stock. So if I was into the crypto blockchain thing and I'm using stable coins or something like that to preserve and make some money in the downturn, I would go first place I would reinvest is in the leading blockchain crypto arena. Well, I mean, because there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a big shakeout. You, you might got to know. 8,000 coins are not going to be around in five years. Well, the <laughs> history says that. The funny thing is, like, so if something has product market fit, it's very likely to stick around. So Bitcoin, Bitcoin has dumped 90%, there, there 80%. There were 100 auto companies that had great product market fit and ended up with four mm-hmm. 20, 30 years later. This, Maybe. Richard, this is just basic business. A lot of new companies enter in an innovative, high-growth industry like this, and they get shaken down to the best 
for the efficiency of the economy and benefit of consumers and everybody. Yeah, nothing wrong but, with that. but the I have, industry can't succeed if it lets every loser stay No, in. but that everything's an S-curve. So, for instance, MySpace was replaced. I'm on S-curves. So yeah. <laughs> so, MySpace was replaced by Facebook. I'm just saying. MySpace is one of my biggest principles. Mm -hmm. MySpace was replaced by Facebook. Facebook is being replaced by TikTok and would have been replaced by WhatsApp and would have been replaced by Instagram, but they fucking buy them all. So they're breaking the S-curve just by merging and acquisitioning them. So, you know, yes, you do have first mover advantages. Yes, you do have critical mass. Yes, you do have network effect like and Lindy second, effect. I like the second movers. I like a bunch of companies to start and a 